Hello and welcome to the Cabin Boy Knits Woolcast, coming to you deep from the Canadian forest. This is Christopher. And this is the other guy. <laughs> we just came back from a big trip to Prince Edward Island and we've got so much wool to share with you. We have an interview with Fruity Nitty and an unexpected pop-up at Fleece and Harmony. Also hot off the press, I've got a book to talk about, Saltwater Socks. Oh, that little wind. Ma, 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 Fiona. Oh, no, she better don't. So sit back, grab your favorite drink, and we'll share our stories with you. We are on our way to Prince Edward Island for a fiber festival. I'm so excited. And we're going to take a couple days to get there. So come along and join us for the ride. I kind of knew it was somewhere special. P.E.I. I've never been to the Maritimes before. It's that away. Two days later. Well, it's the first time for everyone. So let's get going. A little bit of rain, but that's okay. Oh my gosh, why my hair got so white? It's, it's, it's mist. It's mist. It's misty. Yeah, it's good for your face. I know moisturizer. That's my secret. Moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. Whatever. It's just good jeans. Okay, we got the um, U-Haul packed. U-Haul. U-Haul, girl. U-Haul. I did. I hauled the whole damn thing. Okay, so it's full. We're not going to show it. We've done it before. We didn't even unpack from the last time. We just threw everything in there. We seem to have less, but then more personal things because, you know, we are going for two weeks. Yep. The trailer's done. I'll do the driving. Okay, you drive, girl. I'll ride, and then we'll switch it up. excited to see this place. So let's go in and we're going to see Margaret. Come on in. She's the mayor of Mayfield. But that's what her brother calls her anyway. Hello Margaret. Hello. How, how are you doing? Good. How are you doing? I'm great. Great. Fantastic. Beautiful oh, this damp day, right? This is so nice. Well, it's kind of chilly outside, but it feels really nice in here. I have heat. Oh, you have heat. Excellent. <laughs> Makes a difference. Fantastic. So, can you tell us a little about your shop? Sure. Everything here in the studio is 100% Canadian. Okay. So all of the wool I source from Canadian shepherds, Canadian mills, even the weaving looms are Canadian made. Um, oh, I'm the exclusive dealer for Leclerc looms here in Canada, or in Prince Edward Island. The looms are made in Quebec. Mm -hmm. um, the knitting needles are Canadian made. I'm Canadian made. Everything is Canadian made. <laughs> So I really wanted to be able to support local and certainly Canadian as much as I could. That's fantastic. And so the wool, tell us a little bit about the wool. Oh my goodness, a little bit from everywhere. Okay. So what you're looking at right there, that's blue face luster wool. And what's interesting with that wool, when you shear those sheep, the staple is a little longer than the average wool, so it doesn't pill as much yeah. as, as regular wool might. And that's hand dyed by Amanda Moore, Red Island Fibers here on the island. Oh, we're, we'll be seeing her. Uh, if, yep, she's going to be um, at the Fiber uh, Festival as well. Yeah, yeah, and I think she's going to be. Uh, there's going to be a knit night on Thursday yes, night. Thursday night, yes. Yeah, 
And then next to that is some gorgeous, squishy yes. uh, dorset-based down wool. And that's well-traveled, oh, so the sheep are reared in Ontario. Yeah. It's milled in New Brunswick and hand-dyed in Montreal. By sweet paprika. Yep, sweet paprika. Yeah. Sweet paprika. Yep. And then Very nice. up top in the basket, I've got Ooh. some alpaca, yeah. which is blended with 20% merino, and that's from Legacy Lane in New Brunswick. Very nice. Oh, that feels lovely. That's I really know, nice. so squishy. And of course, Briggs and Little, of Canada's course. oldest mill, <laughs> burned down four times, rose up from the ashes. <laughs> the Amazing. Phoenix. Yes. Very and nice. And then there we've got some superwash merino, that's mm -hmm. from Quebec. That's Riverside, Riverside. Studios, yep. hand dyed Good. in Wakefield, Quebec. Very nice. And last but not least, in the bassinet and in the green cabinet, that is French Merino or Rambouillet, and that's from Alberta, Custom yep. Woman Mills. Yeah, they're wonderful. It's called mule spun, but it's got nothing to do with donkeys. <laughs> Just, it's the antique piece of equipment they use to spin their wool. That's very nice. Beautiful. Thank you. And so, I guess some weaving goes on here? I'll be actually teaching a weaving workshop here Thanksgiving weekend. Oh, that's great. So, yeah, um, I teach weaving workshops. I teach knitting workshops almost every day. Um, yeah, so... And so, tell us a little bit about the history of you weaving. My history of weaving? Yeah. Oh, goodness. Well, um, gosh, I first became intrigued with weaving. I did a, a trip to Cape Breton, and I saw this big old loom in a little shop in Cape Breton, and I thought, well, I've got to learn to do this. So then... I did take a weekend weaving course mm -hmm. and started weaving like crazy, but my best, my most favorite story is, of course, the McEachern Tarn. Yes, that's, that's all that. So what happened is, as a family, we'd always worn the McDonald Tartan. Yeah. But there's a chap in Australia who's a genetic researcher, and he found out that we McEacherns are an older family than the McDonald's are. So awesome. he rode away to the court of Lord Lyon in Scotland to get approval for the family to become recognized once again as a distinct clan. Part of that, of course, was having our own tartan. So then there was an international competition to design it. And it came down to five, and I was one of the five. And it, so it was like Massachusetts, Arizona, Australia, Quebec, and mine. And then it went to this international vote, and mine was chosen. That's fantastic. I know. It, that is it so was, good. I didn't expect that. I really <laughs> didn't. I mean, there were some amazingly beautiful designs, and I just, I, I thought, I, I didn't think I would be chosen, but my father had passed away a year to the date that the competition was announced, and he oh, loved gosh. all things Scottish and family history. Yes. He would blare bagpipe music out of the car, and, oh you know, gosh. as a teenager, you're like, oh, Dad, please. He had his kilt and everything else, right? Oh, fantastic. So I just thought, well, I'll enter the competition in his memory. Yeah. Not thinking that I would win, but, yeah. That is so that, amazing. I had goosebumps just when oh, sorry, that was going. Me. It's like... Well, you know it was registered in Scotland three years to the date of his passing. Oh, my gosh. So, it's wow. Like, it was meant to be. I know. It's, I know. I think he's up there doing a jig. Yeah. Know, just, yeah. Oh my gosh, that is so <laughs> extra special. Yeah, it yeah. is. So where can people find you in on social media? I am on Facebook, Instagram. I have a Twitter account, but I rarely post there. Yeah. Ravelry, YouTube. Under what name? A Knit Pickers PEI. Knit Pickers PEI. That's fantastic. Great. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. I'm so glad you guys dropped in. So this is so cool. So are we. Thank you. Thanks, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs>
Can you tell me where we are? Well, you're in North Rustico. Yes. It's a little seaside town on the north side of Prince Edward Island here. And I'm Kathy. This is Kathy. my shop. Oh, it's gorgeous, Kathy. Thank it's really you. nice. So what do you have here? Well, we work with a lot of cottage-based industries throughout Atlantic Canada and other parts of Canada. So we really specialize in wool sweaters. That's our specialty. We have a few from Ireland, too, because that's oh, yeah. where they all originated. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're beautiful. They're really well, thank nice. Thank you. And you have uh, wool here, and you've got hats, and you've got all kinds of... Tooks, wool, uh, different varieties of accessories. We actually have the wool down here, too, from Briggs & Little and yes. McCausland's. Excellent. And we have McCausland Wool & Mills blankets. I don't know if you've heard yes. of them. Oh, I'm absolutely. sure you have. Yes, yep, they're famous. And, uh, yeah, they're very famous. Yep. Yeah, so same generation for six oh, generations. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. And I also noticed you have books here as well. Yeah, we have a few books that yeah. really focus on maritime history and maritime stories. We have a few of the saltwater mitten books I saw by uh, Christine Legro. Yeah. And um, yeah, so we. Uh, my father started this business about 25 years ago. Oh, wow. He was looking for a wool sweater because he was a fisherman and he could not find a wool sweater on Prince Edward Island. Yeah. So he went over to Newfoundland and he sourced out a group of knitters and then from there it just started. That's oh, my brother up there by the way Oh, too. that's fantastic. <laughs> it's a family business. That yeah. is great. Mm. So how many years is that? Uh, 25 years. 25 yeah. years. 25. Wow. We've been here 25 years, yeah. Well, congratulations. Well, thank you. Yeah. Pretty exciting. Yeah, and are you, do you have a website? Or do we do. We have a website. We have a Facebook page. Yeah, just and so how Google can Rusty find Kobe. You? Well, our name is Rusty Kobe Wool Sweater Company. Okay. Just Google that, Rusty Kobe Wool Sweater Company. Yeah. We're also on Facebook too. Yeah. Excellent. And um, we close the end of the season. Uh, our season ends late October. Yeah. But we're going to reopen for weekends going forward to Christmas. Oh, very nice. We just nice. started that a couple years ago. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's terrific. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. So what is the biggest seller here? What do you sell most of? Our sweaters, probably. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we do a lot with our sweaters. Uh, the blankets are very, very popular, especially mm -hmm. during COVID, because oh, a lot sure. of people are at home, coming yeah. up, watching Netflix, and watching and reading their books. Yeah. Um, and our accessories, I mean, you just can never go wrong with the classic old toque or yes. something like that, right? Oh, and yeah. I love this pattern. Yeah, that's made in PEI here, yeah. too, yeah. That's it's great. <laughs> yeah, so no, we, um, and it's just so nice because Customers are looking for something sustainable yes. and that will last and made in Canada. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Most of our products made in Canada. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm so you. happy. Happy we happened upon him. Me store. too. Me too. And it's such a beautiful day out there, so I'm glad you pop, popped in for sure. Yeah. It's nice meeting you both. Nice yes. meeting you as well. Thank okay. you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. And have a woolly nice day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. and Harmony in beautiful Belfast, PEI, and we're going to take a look inside the shop, so let's go. Hi. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. Good. Welcome to Fleece and Harmony. Thank you. What a gorgeous shop. Thank you. Oh, thanks. I'm Ken. And I'm Kim. Excellent. And I'm Christopher, and this is Jamie. Yeah. Hi. Jamie. Hi. Nice to meet you in person. Yes. 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 We watch you all the time, so it's yeah. nice, nice to see you. Yeah. We watch you guys, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go on a trip. So this is a fleece from a local farm that we purchased. Um, this is mostly lamb's wool in here, so right off the backs of the sheep, uh -huh. we get it in. I used to stand here and just kind of just pick it through and stir it. So I yep. get most of the vegetation and things out. So once this is stirred, it goes in a basket and then goes over here. But uh, industrial washer. Oh my So gosh. we're able to do Sorry. about nine pounds of fleece at one time uh, using a high temperature um, water. So it basically breaks down the laminates and things like yeah. that. So 
so once it's washed there, and while we're here, this is our dyeing vat. Oh so this is where God. all the magic happens. Jeez. Wow. So we're able to do probably about a dozen stains at a time. Oh my gosh. So envious. Of course, uh, Jennifer Hicks that does the dyeing for us. Uh, she's got all her recipes and all her contraptions here that uh, she uses to uh, to dye our yarns. And uh, so everything happens here. Again, we use a high heat, hence the propane and the burner under the, yep. under the vat. So we get that it up awesome. to about 180 degrees or so. And then once it's washed, we just bring it over to the dyeing racks and we'll lay it out there. And once they're dried, it basically goes through the picker. And what the picker does, it's basically just a huge big drum with steel prongs on it. And it rips open all the fibers and it lets most of the dirt and the vegetation out. Yep. So I just gather it up by my arms, put it on this table. We actually add the conditioner back into it. So um, it just prevents it from being static sure. as you're yep. working through. So once that's done here, it goes to what's called a dehair. And basically, again, it's taking all the vegetation, opening up all the fibers. And when it comes out, kind of see it's oh nice it's, it's it's almost clean yep so it's like 99 percent clean so this is the uh, carding machine and this is where we do all our blending as well so if we're going to do say an alpaca blend a mohair blend mm -hmm. this is where we do it here and it just it's a series of drums and then it just comes out as a welding so we tell the computer we tell the computer how many yards per pen that we want. So it's so once yeah. it comes off this machine, it's basically a finished product. And then we just bring it over to the winder, tell the computer how many yards per skein that we want. And that's our end product here. And then once it's uh, skinned up like this, we bring it back to the back, and that's where we do our dyeing. So it's done at the end of the process. Sure. Yep. Yeah. So that's pretty much the whole wow. tour in two that's seconds. Fantastic. That's, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Anything with our Fleece and Harmony label is manufactured right back there using a Belfast Mini Mill. And Belfast Mini Mill is in over 50 different countries around the world now. So we're lucky oh. enough to have one. This right is, here on the island. This is nice. So this is a special blend. This is our sock yarn, which we do a blend of 80% wool with 20% wool hair. That is really nice. So that's kind of our sock wow. yarn. And then as well, we do an airing weight uh, yarn as well. Just back here. So again, we do uh, an airing weight at 120, or sorry, 150 yards to 100 grams. Nice and sturdy. A lot of nice outdoor sweaters were made with this. Oh, it's beautiful. Yes, yeah, and really then nice over too. here, we also do a worsted weight. And again, we go a little bit lighter. So we go 200 yards for 80 grams. And it's a nice uh, sweater weight uh, yarn as well. So Kim has a few samples up here using worsted down the end there. We also do a lace weight yarn, which is a blend of 70% uh, wool with 30% mohair. So the mohair gives it a nice, nice soft feel to yep. it. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Very nice. And then again, from here, we just do more worsted weight. And this is actually a garment Kim uh, has made using our worsted weight. Again, it's a nice outdoor sweater type. That's beautiful. Yeah. This is actually our own blend. We do have uh, Angora bunnies here on the farm, which oh, I forgot wow. to show you. Uh, we have nine bunnies that Kim brushes pretty much every day. So we'll save the wool that comes off of those bunnies. And when we do have enough, we'll do a nice special batch of uh, what we call Iona bunny. And again, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it. it's just an 85% wool with 15% Angora. Jamie, that has your name and on it. And it's quite, uh, quite, quite unique. <laughs> and that's kind of every, all the uh, different yarns that we uh, do here in the, in the mill. Very oh good. Yeah. Very nice. So if people want to get a hold of you, where can they reach you? Uh, we're on all the socials. So Fleece and Harmony on Instagram, 
Facebook, and uh, of course we have our YouTube channel. Right? You can comment there. And the YouTube channel is great. We we watch it. We're big big fans. So oh, okay. this is this Kudos has been great. All around. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been this has been great. I love your shop. It's beautiful. Thank you. And thank you so much for the tour of the oh, you're welcome. Yeah. And, and outside, we really appreciate it. Great. So great. thank you. So great to see you guys. Yeah. Likewise. Bye. Likewise. Bye. And Jamie, thank you for filming. Yeah. <laughs> you're welcome. Thanks, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs>
pick out how much we might need for each piece that we're going to do. Yes. And uh, select the color that the people who are buying it like the best, mm -hmm. which might not be the same as what I would pick out, but we <laughs> sure. let them pick out Absolutely. what they yep. pick out. And then what we do is we size the fabric and decide how much that a person might need mm -hmm. for okay. the project. And Excellent. we do the same with yarn in that it's a little harder to decide how much to use, but usually people like to take extra because if they like one color and they're buying it, they'll put it in their next project. Sure. Oh, oh yeah, I didn't think about that. Yes. That makes sense. So leftovers and scraps are great for rug hooking because a lot of the patterns call for small amounts mm -hmm. of uh, some of the colors. Yeah. If you look at the windows on some of the houses or the doors, for instance, it doesn't take very much. So what you do is you root through your rags and you pick out one that would do you for that time. So you make do. And how long would it take to do to make one of these for an experienced? That for an experience, well, that one's a good example because most of the time I spend getting it ready and finishing it. Yeah. But a whole evening in front of the TV would probably, I could probably hook an eight by eight if all my materials were there and I didn't have to change any. Oh, wow. That's a lot. Jeez. One of the most forgiving thing about rug hooking, on like knitting sweaters, for instance, is that. If I don't like the, let's say the leaves that are in the curl there, yep. I can, even though that's finished, I can still take the leaf color out and put another color in there. Oh, wow. It's a lot harder to do in other types of work, but not yep. with rug hooking. I can also add a brighter eye to the curl if I mm -hmm. want to, for instance. Oh, that's great. So it's very forgiving that way. And who designs the patterns? In this case, um, those are my patterns, but Betty designs her Great. line of patterns as well. Mm -hmm. and she has a lot of houses and fishing sheds. She's also got some trees. This one has a picture on it. What we do when we sell a pattern to someone is we hook it beforehand and we provide a picture to give them an idea of what we did and then they can buy the colors that they like to put in there. Oh, right. It would be like sense. making, let's say a quilt would be the same. You'd yep. probably never get the exact same colors because there are various colors in there. But there's an example of somebody might have lots of scraps left over from other projects. Yeah. And so they can work them into the ground here, into the field. Very nice. That's, That's a lovely nice. way to work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And are there groups... Uh, do, do you get together, sit sit together with, like, I, I my only point of reference is um, groups of knitters get together and, and knit. Do you have the same thing we with rug hooking? We could the knitters. Oh, please. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of groups of rug, of rug hookers in the Maritimes. Yes. Also in Ontario and other places in the States as well. Yep. But the Maritimes has many groups. We have, um, we have a guild. For the Maritimes, Newfoundland mm -hmm. has a guild of their own, and then there are small groups that meet. Uh, there's probably three or four that meet in uh, PEI, yeah. and then there are the people who get together with their friends and meet on a weekly basis or a monthly basis, perhaps mm -hmm. three or four people together. Yeah. And they exchange their ideas and their patterns and their wool. And so it's very social for them. And is this something that's passed down to children in the family usually, or is it something that pick up as a... In the past, it would have been passed down, but there was a generation in the 50s, 60s, where people on the farms, most of it was country. Sure. And especially in the Maritimes um, and in the Northeastern states. What people did was they did learn it from their parents and it got passed down, but then it became an old fashioned craft that no one wanted. Mm -hmm. And you could buy flooring for the floors. Yeah. You didn't have to make something from rags. Sure. So people got away from that. And my grandmother would have hooked, but my mother and my aunt didn't hook very much. 
So they didn't have to. Yeah. And the people that did stay hooking were perhaps grandmothers that didn't have anything else to do. Sure. And they would keep up their custom. Yeah. But many of the people that come in here, especially if they're from the Maritimes, they're drawn to it because they know somebody that hooked and they remember the rugs on the floor because they keep for a long time. Oh, that's interesting. And they were good rugs in the good rooms and used <laughs> rugs in the kitchen. And as they got more used, yeah, they'd be like clothing. They went to the porch steps, perhaps, yeah. in the end and got thrown out. So they weren't made to keep or hang on the wall. They were made to be sure. useful. But these are meant to be on the wall. Yeah, yes. <laughs> they are, except that they're completely wool yep. on linen with cotton backings on the cord around the back. And the seat covers actually are made to be used, and many people still oh, do make yeah. very useful rugs for the floor. They like it that way. Yeah. And they use them. Of course, the use that people give them now is not the same as it would have been in the past when they were used for the warmth. Very, very nice. It's beautiful. Well, it certainly is an interesting hobby, and yeah. we've certainly met lots of people. Yep. Sure, oh, I can imagine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, d is there a website or. I usually. I'm on Instagram. Oh, excellent. Under pa Well, I'm under Shirley Hooks Rugs PEI, and then Betty is under Betty Hooks Rugs. Okay. And we put a little bit online, but mostly we rely on the shop. Sure. And the PEI Craft Council is where we sell some of our work. Yep. So we're pretty small, and we. Uh, it would be nice to have both the shop and an online presence, but at some point in time, oh my gosh. I just there's, decided. There's only so many, so many hours only, in the day. Yes. I have another life, too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't devote it all to rug cooking. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us. You're welcome. Thanks, Jamie, for filming. Thank you to Kim and Ken from Fleece and Harmony for putting this up today and allowing us to have a pop-up at their store. It was all last minute. It was successful. We met the saltwater ladies here. And a big thank you especially as well to Andrea and Madeline. Great meeting you. Fantastic afternoon all around. And I just want to thank everyone who came out today. You made it a fantastic day. So take care, everyone. Stay safe. We have a lot to cover in this episode in terms of stuff we picked up at stuff. stores. We picked up a lot of wool. Is it wool related? It's, I was going to say, it's not just any stuff. It's very wool related. So why don't we get into it? Sure. We've got some right on, right on the... <laughs> oh, these old things? Um, okay, well, you, you go first. <laughs> I recognize them. I know where they were from. So this I could, was a... I could picture where they were from. Yes. So this is um, Rustico Bay... Um, wool and sweater company yes and they were just about we were staying kind of over here um, for the first few days in this beautiful uh, house on the water with had a, like a turret an upstairs turret yeah. with all window we had a 360 view as opposed to when I said we had a 180 view <laughs> that would be out of all around <laughs> that's if you close one eye and you're only exactly. looking exactly and so yeah Rust Rustico is just down the highway along the coast we could just drive there it was a short drive a beautiful drive just up that way northern part of the province and do you know where the store was i could see it in my mind's eye what town was it in well it was in mexico <laughs> yes <laughs> i want to see if you're paying Don't attention me. always trying to make me look dumb 
<laughs> That's uh, not true. I know because I'm smart. And we met some I'm wonderful smart. people. We met the owners. Um, Ricky showed us a sweater that was 45 oh years gosh. old. It looked brand new. It was he really was, nice. He was very proud of that sweater because he had had it so long. Yeah. And was it from his dad or his dad? His dad. There was a dad his, connection. Yeah. yeah. And well, the dad started the store as well. And it meant a lot to him. But this, it, it looked like it could have been knitted yesterday. It was in yeah. pristine condition. It was a beautiful sweater, and he had a great story to tell. And it just shows the, the warmth and the history of the island and wool and knitting. Yeah. And they had fantastic sweaters in there, just beautiful, beautiful sweaters. Yarn and socks. We picked some. <laughs> we picked up some socks and because we just love them and the colors are fantastic so which i think this one's yours uh, that one's mine you know how i can tell how can you tell because the i have larger calves and <laughs> i didn't say muscular i said larger and so these are a little and bit I'm wider. skinny legs no that's not why it's because he's got he's got the green on top because it makes his eyes pop oh, and the pink is my new favorite color and mine have the pink on top and my feet are bigger, and it's got the pink tips. Yeah, so they're absolutely bigger than mine. We wear the same shoes. Oh right. <laughs> we share everything. <laughs> TMI. TMI. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, they're yeah. beautiful. We love. We just love them. I mean, I would. I. I would imagine knitting something like this. So you know, what I mean, are you talking about? Of course, well, you could do I mean, that. I'm not even going there with my mind. This just blows my <laughs> mind. The thought of knitting something like this. I know it's possible, but today it's just about what I see, and I could just pick them up and wear them. And they're beautiful. And these were knit in Newfoundland and then shipped over. And they were knit by one second. Was there a name? Yeah, the um, Yarn Point Knitters in Newfoundland. Oh, yeah, in Fortune Bay. Yeah. So these are beautiful socks. I love them. And they're great to wear around the cabin. These are the ultimate cabin socks, I think. They're my Christmas present socks. I said yeah. I was going to wrap them up and save them for Christmas because by then we'll have forgotten about it. And then all of a sudden I go, oh my gosh, look what I got. And the next one I want to talk about was our mm -hmm. visit to Knit Pickers with, Knit Pickers with Mayor Margaret. My brother calls her Mayor, the Mayor. Mm, Knit Pickers. Yes. Let's refresh. Yeah. So. Um, she suggested also that she had asked if we had got, were going to be going to Knit Pickers, and we said, oh yes, we're going to Knit Pickers. Yeah, Margaret McEachran. Oh, of course. Yes, of course. And I was really, oh, really looking forward to this one mm -hmm. because Margaret is also famous. We met so many she was already on, She was already, uh, you were absolutely, the, she was on yeah. the list. She was our must-go-to list. An incredible knowledge of so many things. Uh, very focused on Canadian wool. And, and a fantastic weaver and, and big big accomplishment she was the her pattern was chosen for the McEachern tartan and she it was a competition for people all over the world and she won it it's amazing Absolutely beautiful fantastic yep. as you'll see and I did um, pick up some yarn yes yes and so this yarn is Red Island fiber and it's from Amanda and Amanda is a very special person to us. Um, she's been a viewer for a while, and she's a great, great dyer. And what did Amanda do? Amanda, I found it through the grapevine mm -hmm. that there were other knitters there from Ottawa. Yes. And I think it was um, Catherine with a K, and Denise and Joyce. Yes. And um, she, Amanda showed them around the island or parts of the island. But okay. Amanda also arranged for a knit night because the original was can was canceled oh, okay. and so That's Amanda to me <laughs> takes a while oh my gosh so Amanda set up a, a really great knit night and we had so much fun and that was Thursday night at the brewery at the brewery which is fantastic yeah we had beers yeah and knitting and then we were, and then remember there was a pizza that, we had pizza as oh well. it was delicious it was fantastic yeah. and it was so nice I think it was just town brewery yeah that sounds about right and then there was that other table of young knitters remember and they yes made, it's almost like they were oblivious that there was even going to be a fiber festival they were just sitting over there knitting i thought well they're knitting they're obviously part of the group and then we went and they were like huh <laughs> what do you old folk want <laughs> they're doing their own thing <laughs> they're nothing to do with part of the like, oh i think i heard they're one of the festival but they were lovely they were knitting and they're young okay old folk just That's to great. be clear so that that was my that our table isn't <laughs> that was <laughs> my revolt on. against you they were really referring to us and not everyone else at the table i know they didn't say that <laughs> i was just feeling like they were like 
Why? Why are you talking to us? We're just knitting. We just happened to be here. Yeah. But it was a cool coincidence. And so do you remember what store we were talking about now? We're talking about knitpickers. Uh, totally sidetracked. We're ahead of ourselves so, on, the on our trip. Yeah. So this is 100% blue face luster, and I can't wait to knit with it. I will be knitting some socks okay. with this, and I'm going to knit it with, what color do you think I'm pairing with this? Gray. No. Black. Yeah, it's black. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, black or brown. I haven't decided yet. But I think I thought you picked up the, you picked up some black. I did. Oh, I originally I, saw picked, it. I originally I wanted saw to it map with my own eyes. Magic with up, black. We, we talked about it. you pull up so many colors together together yes. and we chose a color to go with it. Now you're still up in the air about it. Yeah, and now that I'm, this is coming out of my mouth, I'm thinking it would look good in a dark brown as well. Oh my goodness. Pink and it you already have a pair of pink they, and brown. Those, you know those chocolates with the strawberry. You already did a pink and brown pair. They're sitting they're upstairs. <laughs> You've worn them. Yeah, but this is this is blue face luster. I didn't do the other ones in blue face luster. They're pink and brown. <laughs> anyway, we had a great time uh, at Nitpickers. That that was and so Margaret knows lovely. everything. She knows yes. everything about everything. She told us about the cast of Anne Marie Gables. She, yeah, she knows. She spilled the tea. She knows. Okay. She has her finger. Can we share that? She has her finger on the pulse. Yeah, can we share that? A little bit of the story. Well, it's fact. So, of course, we're just passing along information. Are they going to see it already, or would you, do we mention it? I don't think it's mentioned in the episode, in the interview. Yeah. So what happened? <laughs> I, I, I'm not clear on exactly where Jamie's going with this, but I think I what he's talking about... Anna Green Gables. Yeah, so he's, I think he's talking about the, the cast... The connection is Anna Green Gables. Yes, the cast of Anna of Green Gables. Which is wonderful. A bunch of them started dating each other, and some of them a married... A bunch of them. And some of them married each other. Two I couples, can't remember. I think it's two couples got married. Yeah, well, that's close to. And there was a Gil, a Gilbert and an Anne. Yes, they got married, and yeah. then I forget how it went, but another Gilbert and Anne dated, but that didn't quite work out, you know, fairy tale like. Um, and then uh, she or he met uh, one of the other cast members, and they got married from the same cast. Yeah, that's amazing. But could you believe it? Anna Green Gables, and then the Gilbert and the Anne in real life today get married, and then another couple. That's wonderful. Did you ever date anybody when you were on set? Not and in the cast, when you're on the cast of anything? No, I wanted to date a couple of people. They weren't interested. <laughs> oh, I find that hard to believe. <laughs> so the next place that was on my bucket list was Pastimes, and it was rug hooking. And we don't spend a lot of time with hookers. <laughs> what? <laughs> I oh, that joke's so old. Everybody say, like, I don't know how many people we talked about, like, oh, and, then, uh, and then who's just t going on and on? We're laughing about it because it's like yes. they always mention the hookers, and then it seems like, you know, the, the ones that always say the little jokes, like, oh, we're just a couple of hookers. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like they've heard it a gazillion times. Yes. And it's so done that, and it's not appropriate. I had to add. But it's still rug <laughs> hookers. And so, anyway. At their age. <laughs> Anyway, so we went to Pastimes Rug Hooking yes. and met with Shirley. Shirley was the one who, in the interview. She did a great job um, for somebody who said she didn't want to be in front of the camera. Yeah. And I found an interview of hers on YouTube. So Which is she, funny. Because that's why she was she, great. She was fantastic. But the thing is, you know... When you ask somebody if they want to be, you know, interviewed, or at least let's just have a chat, which is what we call yeah. it, it. The thing is, what we like to say is just, well, it's it's just stuff you know. So when you know about something, you just have to talk about what you know. And so if you know, it's, it's not like you have to um, read a script or practice what you're going to say, because your knowledge is there. You've been doing it for years, and it's an art form that you know inside and out. So you could just chat, chat about chat about what you have around her. She had some, she was talking about the wool and recycled wool and, and what she uses and, and the strips. And so her knowledge is right there. And so she had some fascinating, you know, it was very, very historical. Um, it's a historical topic and she had a lot to say. And it was a wonderful, wonderful time having the chat with her. Yeah, and it's just like you um, giving us a history lesson. Same thing. Putting the microphone in front of your face and well, telling us. Well, I think she's more excited, be excited, <laughs> or ex not excited, exciting, because you're in her shop. She's got all this wonderful stuff to talk about all around. Yep. So can you just move that way for a little bit? Why? It's not because of your breath. It's because oh, of bang. this. Oh, of course. I forgot that was even there. <laughs> so when we were there, my eye, there was so many great uh, rug, hook, rug hooking rugs. Oh, rugs. That's rugs. Funny. There's so many great rugs there. And my eye kept going to this one. 
And so at the back of the room. At the back of the room. We, yeah. As you as you will see, and as you see, they're all here. But if you when we were talking to her, this one was behind her because she was standing that way. So that one was over there by the door. Yeah. So Shirley's sister Betty did this one, and uh, I kept looking at it, and it, it didn't have a price tag on it. And so we, we asked a forgotten little, you know. And it wasn't technically for sale that day because Betty's husband still liked it. I hope he's not watching. <laughs> yeah, it was all, it's all about, this has happened before apparently because if he has a favorite that he really admires and really loves it and likes it, he, he doesn't want to part with it. He's like, oh, we're keeping that one. It's beautiful. Yeah. And so there was another one that was we liked just almost as much. But then, like you said, we look at this one, which was there. And then when we turn around, it was just that feeling when you looked at it. It's just... When yeah, they say it, it speaks happy. to you. It's just yeah. like, oh, there's something so outstanding about it. And it's just the landscape and the, the house that stands out. The and potato. The... Sorry. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I love. The, I also love the wind. The wind and the swirls in the sky. And like I say, the rows, the rows upon rows of the potato fields. Um, and the house is a historical house down the road. Yes. Um, and there's a documentary of Betty Young... Actually, in the documentary, she's making this exact Which is rug. incredible. She's making this rug that we have right here. And it's even funny that we're calling it a rug because it's a work of art. It is. Yeah. They become art. It's not it's going an, on the floor. It's an art form, an historical art form that goes back. But yes, it was like, as she mentioned, they're originally, historically, they were made to use. They were because the frozen cold, you yeah. know, floors. I mean, some of them might have just been dirt floors and you put them down and as it got warm, you know, you had it, you know, in the one main room and then as it got more and more worn, it maybe made its way to the kitchen and then it made its way to, you know, an upstairs bedroom or back room or then to the porch. Yeah. Eventually the porch where you just wipe your feet on it because it was well worn, but they made use of them. They lasted a very long time. Yeah. And one of the things I wanted to point out is that specific to Prince Edward Island rug hooking is the black outline uh, so you can see black outlining on the house and on the trees and so that's basically what they're doing is between out, the landscapes yeah, yeah so they're outlining in black and then they put color in, in and then between. they fill it in yeah, yeah it's kind of like when you're a kid and you draw you draw everything remember you use a black crayon you draw everything out and then you color it in or yes or you use pencil same thing you do a pencil yeah in black and then you color everything in it's almost like that but how did you manage to then fandangle a deal and take this home then <laughs> Well, we had to explain that part. We were talking to Shirley. Uh, Shirley's wonderful. And I was just, I think part of it was the fact that we loved the, the piece. And I did assure Shirley uh, to pass along to her sister that uh, this is going to a good home and that the people in the house, the two of us, greatly appreciate it and will cherish it. And so. Shirley was brokering the deal with her sister. So she called the, the, her sister, her sister. There was a little back and forth. And they but were... the answer was no. I know, she, the answer was no at first. I was like, <laughs> no. And then we left. Yeah, we were... Oh, we were in the car. We were filming outside. And we were about to leave. Oh, were we? Yes. And then, okay. we, went, then we went back in. We did? We did. And so the deal was closed. And Oh, that's right. It is in a great home. It. And, and I do love it. We, we really, really love this piece. It's absolutely stunning. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm so glad we went there. I will put a link to the documentary where this house is being, or this house, the uh, piece of art is being created, or this rug. And I'll also put the link, there's a YouTube interview with Shirley, and I'm going to add that as well. Yeah, it's quite fun. So next we went to Fleece and Harmony before, so that was our, one oh, of our first right. trips. Because we went there to interview Kim and Ken, who are so amazing. Yes, and we so wanted amazing. to get and we wanted to do a little tour of their shop because we hadn't been there, and we follow them and watched uh, Place and Harmony their videos. Yes, and so we were just so excited about going there and checking it out live, up close and personal. We were fanboying. Well, at least I was, for sure. I, I play it cool. I just keep it together. <laughs> but I'm not as excited about wool as this one is. I'm a little not more emotional all. around wool. <laughs> God, you're emotional around anything. It's emotional with the chickens that were in the, last, in the yard at the last house. Oh, that's true. Okay. <laughs> so let's get some, let's show some goods. Okay. I'll show you, I'll show mine if you show yours. Did I get something there? Yes. Oh, Yes. Is that where I got that? Yes. <laughs> it's been like, we've just been back a few days. I, I, 
I said it felt like we were away for a month and there's so much packed into that our time our times there that you know it you've got to remind me and then it all comes together eventually. Yeah. I'm so excited about these two skeins of yarn. Yes. I'm excited about the color. And I don't know why. I was all about hats and socks when we were away. Because... Well, knowing about, you know, the Saltwater Socks book. Yes. I that, think that you had that in, in, on your mind. Yeah, and hat because I didn't bring a tooth with me. Yes. Um, so these are 80% wool and 20% mohair. And Well, first of all, the colors are fantastic. That is beautiful. Yeah. That and the I slate is beautiful as well. Almost fluorescent green is beautiful. And but just feel Lime. the yarn. It is so wonderful. It's wool, eighty percent wool, twenty percent mohair. Can I feel it? And well, yeah, yes, you can feel it. <laughs> but it's fantastic. Waving it in front of my face and teasing me with it. Just it's let me really feel it already. nice. Just let me feel it already. And those go great together. I remember you were trying to debate between the dark. The darker or the lighter? Yeah. And you went with the darker? Yeah. Now, is that brown or, or, or natural black? This is called slate. And do you slate. remember there was slate? So they what they do is they relate so the I labels. Remember. The <laughs> oh, I remember every label you looked at. Yeah. Was it the slate or was it the charcoal? Or was no, it I'm talking about the naming convention. Oh, so no, Ken, I don't Ken remember. Ken told us that the naming convention, they relate something to the island. So and this, this is this like one the slate of the roof of a building. Okay. And, and then, I can't remember which building. this one then? And then this one's they caramel. They got me all intrigued like. <laughs> caramel apple. Oh, they had apple trees on their farm? Yeah, they did. Well, they did. Yeah. We're and not we'll, going there. Yeah, we're not going there right now. So anyway, these these are, I'm, I'm so excited about these. Because yes. because when you see wool, um, like when you see wool mixed with mohair, it's, it's great. It feels wonderful. But this is so... Well, soft. It's, it's soft it's, because of the mohair, beautiful. but you can tell that it's got it's got texture that, to it. The texture to it that's going to be. I love it. That's going to work well for socks. Yeah, or a hat. It could be a hat because of the softness, but we know the durability of the wool. You could feel it. Yeah, and so you know that's going to be great for any one of those projects. I love this yarn. And did I get one? You picked one as well. Well, okay. I think you. Who brought it? I, no. Did I say I like the color? Did I like that color? How did it go again? You like the name. But I will say, well, no, I, I didn't just like it because no, the you name. like the color I, first. I like the color. Yeah, I didn't see the name. That's that's right. You love the color and you love the feel of it. I think it was the touch yeah, that I was you drawn to the purple. And I almost, I wasn't sitting on a chair, but if I sit on a chair, it would have fallen off because this is the first skein of yarn that you've actually picked up <sighs> right. from. I had a moment. <laughs> yes, and 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 picked it up and said you're going to buy it. I've never seen that. Yeah, never seen something happened. Before. We talked about this with with our new friends. Yeah, because it was shockingly, um, yeah, it was shocking to me because I said, "Oh my God, I done it." I was like, "Oh, I, oh, I want this yarn. Yeah, I'm gonna buy this." Well, what are you gonna knit with it? I don't know, but I'm buying it. I thought I misheard you. Something I've never heard. I crossed words I've never over, heard from your mouth. Before. I crossed over to the woolly side <laughs> that moment when I went, welcome when I was welcome. like, "Oh, I want that yarn." That was the weirdest thing. And as I did it, I went, "What just happened?" So I, I, I want to read something to you, or do you want, maybe you want to read it. Well, you could read it. No, you know. Okay, I'll read it to you. Take it away. I, uh, <laughs> I took it out of your hand. <laughs> Tell me more about my wool. <laughs> my vibe, I loved it, so. Here. No, I feel no, badly. No, you you don't. Don't. I can't, I don't have my glasses. <laughs> okay. Because you're the one who found the name. I didn't even look at it. I, I, just, a, I grabbed it, and then you said, you picked it up and started reading. I own a bunny. I own a bunny. But I think this Iona is a name. We saw that throughout the island. There were Ionas. Yes. Yes. I own a bunny. I thought it was hysterical <laughs> after you told me. Yes. Because I didn't know the name until I picked it up when you read it. And do you know what the color is called? No. Amethyst brooch. Oh, amethyst brooch. Is there amethyst on the island? Do you know? Well, I'm going to read something to you. Yeah. Oh, we didn't say what the, what the wool was. No. It's... 85% wool and 15% angora. That's why the Hence Iona the name. rabbit. Yes. That was kind of an important detail that we left out. <laughs> anyway, thought to provide protection and good fortune, an amethyst brooch plays a pivotal, pivotal, a pivotal role in our favorite book. It's sure to bring beauty to whatever you knit. What favorite book? Anne of Green Gables. 
Oh. Yes. I'm guessing it's Anne of Green Gables. Well, I'm but guessing I, but too. I know Am- it's I know Amethyst Brooch is in Anne of Green Gables. Well, then that's what it is, obviously. Yes. And what is it supposed to bring you? What? Protection and good fortune. There you go. <gasps> I need to knit something extra special with this. Yes. And I think if, I said I was going to wear it around my neck, probably. Somewheres. I'll figure it out. If anybody has any suggestions for Jamie to knit something no, around his neck. No, because then it's going to be a challenge. Since they're going to make me knit something crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it brings, what did you say it brings? Good fortune? <laughs> so you have to knit something with it. And protection. So and protection. Well, we know it's going to be protection anyway. Like it's, yes. The wool is going to keep me warm. Yeah. Whether it be my head, my neck. Maybe I'll make some little, whatchamacallums? Glovelets. Fingerless gloves. Fingerless gloves. Yeah. Something special. Great. I own a bunny. There Thank you, you go. Okay, so that was Fleece and Harmony. Thank you, Fleece and Harmony. So, at this point, Fleece and Harmony, so we, we did, as, as we're going to see, we did a little tour of the mill, and we had a, a great chat, we picked up a few purchases, and off we went on our way. But then what happened? Fiona happened. Fiona. So, so Fiona was threatening to... Well, it was brewing. ...wreck havoc all over the island. And they had to make a call uh, whether was to... Was wreak havoc? When I say they, the um, organizers of the festival, should they have it or should they not have it? And it was coming pretty fierce. So it was cancelled, unfortunately. I mean, fortunately, it was cancelled because... Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately. Unfortunately, because well, I couldn't have it, but fortunately, because to sit, to protect people. Because it for, Fiona was nasty. And people wouldn't be able to get over the bridge to the island. And it just wasn't safe. Well, the we bridge was closed. Flights yeah. were cancelled. People couldn't get there. But... The organizers did a great job because originally they, 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 you know, they thought it through because they thought, you know, there are a lot of people already here. Yeah. The special invited guests and a lot of people had arrived prior to, um, you know, days ahead. If you're going to go that, that distance, you, you're going to tour around like we did. So they, they were taken into consideration of all factors. And then at that point too, like you said, you know, it was starting up like it was only going to be considered a tropical s- storm possibly, um, but it started picking up a little more fierceness. And, and then the, the, when the reality really sets in and it's very unfortunate to have to make a decision to tell all these people who came a long way that it's not going to happen. So they, they then made the, the right decision to say, no, we need to cancel this because it's just not. Yeah going to happen so we found that out on thursday and then um and then and then the rooms were canceled because they just assumed that people would leave the island or people who hadn't arrived were people yeah. wanted to leave they were giving us enough notice so if you want to leave the island you just pack and leave um and that was an option to just they figured you'd want to get out yeah so we were on the north shore and we at that time it was checkout time we were going to the delta but our that's where the festival was supposed to be happening and then our, so our, everyone's room was canceled at the, at the Delta. Um, so we booked another place because we thought, well, we're going to we'll just let's write it out. So well, we had we were planning on visiting some of the other maritime provinces. So we were still yes. a week to go of, yeah. of touring. Yeah. And, and at the same time um, that it was canceled, Kim called and said, um, I thought she was calling to invite us to sleep in a tent on her property. Because <laughs> her house was under renovation. <laughs> so was she thought, well, that. where are you staying? And we're like, I don't know where we're staying. And, and she said, would you like it? I said, yes, before she even finished the sentence. And it was really to do a pop-up at their uh, farm before the storm hit. And we said, absolutely, we've got a trunk full of yarn. And we're ha- more than happy to go there. And that was super, super nice of her to do. So. And he was saying yes. I'm not on the I'm like, I'm like... <laughs> like what are you saying yes to like there's a storm brewing we don't even know where we're staying tonight because we had to leave we had to leave that the was, next day the, the next day we had to leave we were booked to to, to move to the festival yes. headquarters and we're just and I was we we're already you know there was a lot going on in our mind you know yeah, she, we didn't know what the heck, you know, what, which direction this was going to go. So we found a place close in close proximity to Fleece and Harmony. We thought it would be great. And it was a perfect place. It had a water view. It was you. beautiful. It was gorgeous. The ocean. <laughs> and we had been there just the day before as well. On our tours, we had a lovely lunch there. But number one, oh, picture. Oh, first, before you get into that, they did accept our, um, the Airbnb did accept our money and said, yes, we could stay there. Yeah. Knowing that the storm is coming. So the main, the main thing you just need to know is there's a lighthouse. It's on a point. It juts out in the middle of the ocean. 
that's where we were planning on staying the next day to ride out the storm. And it's like, and we also, and then we also thought, do we want to stay exactly where we are? But we, did they get back to us? Yeah, they did get back. But it wasn't that we could stay there. But I'm glad but it was too late. But it doesn't, that, could you imagine we were in that tower and it's all glass? I don't think it would have been a good idea. The water was just over there. The coast is just there. Um, so we're like, you know, I think the Delta needs to be where it's going to be. But we booked the place because we thought, okay, let's book this place. Not thinking. <laughs> or maybe the reality hadn't set in, but we didn't know. We thought it was just going to be a bad storm. And yeah. Everybody was saying that too, though. The islanders like, oh, we've had storms before. It just turns into like a big thunderstorm. Yeah, we were talking storm. to a couple from New Brunswick, they said, and they said just, the same thing. It's just a storm. It's yeah. they've had many, many coastal storms, um, and we were thinking, oh, okay, but we're still like, oh, really? And so we're on our, we're on our way seen. down to Fleece and Harmony, and we receive a uh, text. Um, Sorry, your reservations canceled. At this right, place. and and they were very great. They said, look. Um, we don't feel it's not going to be safe for it's you to be there safe. because it's going to the storm's supposed to hit dead on in that area. So we it would not have been a good idea. And they they said they're going there to remove everything from the exterior and board it up and shutter it up and close her down. Yeah, to be prepared for the storm. So we said let's go to the Delta firstly before we get to Fleece and Harmony and figure Is that stuff. the same day. Um, no, it was the day before. It was the day before I think we went to anyway. We went to the I Delta. Don't know. No, yeah. No. Yes. Yeah, because we had to be at Fleece well, and Harmony by 10 o'clock in the morning. So there's no way we went and negotiated a room right. before then. I don't it was remember. the day before. I do not recall. I do remember. Okay, and so we left, went. Because we hadn't hitched the trailer. Because we, when we toured around, we left the trailer yes, at that's that right. spot. So the trailer was sitting yes. sitting at the, where we were staying yes. for those days. Yeah. So we went to the Delta and said, I know you have rooms because you just released a whole block of them. Um, we'd like to stay here. And everybody's leaving Dodd. <laughs> so we here. know you have rooms. <laughs> Because I wanted to be somewhere that was safe, and I had a generator, uh, because I thought that would be important <laughs> if, yeah. if, the, if they don't have any power. So we booked there, and they did. And then I said, "Is there any chance we'd have an ocean view?" <laughs> don't ask me what I was thinking, but I did think like, "Well, I don't know. I just thought it was going to be a bad storm, and we could just, you know, why not be on the ocean front because it's right on the water." Yeah, and so then they accepted that, and then the next day when we tried to check in, they said, "Sorry, we're going to move you from the." We're seventh. moving everybody. Yeah, from down. the seventh floor, you're going to go down to the fourth floor. And I said, "Well, is, that, is there an ocean view?" She said, "No," and I said, "Well, I'd rather stay at the seventh floor. Thank we'll just you." Just stay put. So, like, if you're going to be in the middle of a hurricane, you might as well have a front row seat. And so we went back to the seventh. <laughs> Not floor. really. No, the reason why is because they were afraid the power would go out, and then she said, "Do you really want to walk seven floors?" And I said, "Which yes. is fine." Yeah, it was mostly because of that. They did say that the 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 big picture windows were hurricane proof they're yes. very thick and solid and all of that which gave us reassurance but kind of not really because <laughs> i thought well there's double drapes and the sunshade blind we're closing all that in case something we don't know what to expect i was we don't know we didn't know what to expect. but if, if hurricane windows means water comes through during a hurricane then yes they were the water was <laughs> <coming through. laughs> anyway before the storm so the, the, the day before the storm, we had a pop-up at Fleece and Harmony. Yes. And so this is what you agreed to. They said, hey, because Friday was... <laughs> I agreed to it. Well, Friday was... I mean, the storm wasn't to happen until middle of the night, that yes. night into early morning Saturday. So there yes. was a full day of... And as we said, there were a lot of people there for a festival. And, and, and we thought, well, there are a lot of people on the island. And it's going to be a day of, you know, yeah. like any other... Unless you're preparing for a storm, um, and so we we went, and not only were we there, but we had so we had a pop up, but we were also being interviewed by Fruity Knitting, Fruity Knitting. and so Andrea and Madeline. Yes. Oh my gosh, they are so nice. So they worked it all out that they invited, and they also invited, and they they become friends. They they had been friends. Andrea and Kim. Yeah. Uh, had this very f wonderful friendship that they had it in the works all online and they were meeting for i'm getting emotional just thinking about it now <laughs> oh my i, I this is this <laughs> is like this is like a three kleenex episode oh, I, for, no. I forgot to That's, disclose that no, they beforehand. were friends and they 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 you know formed a bond and friendship prior to this and they yeah. were wonderful they got to meet and they said hey come on down to fleece and harmony cabin boy nets are, are going to be coming and so they they arranged to say oh we'll we'll do an interview at Fleece and Harmony. Right, because we were supposed to be interviewed by Fruity Knitting at on site after we set up our booth, but that wasn't oh, that's happening. Right. So it was right. it was moved to it was planned our little on. our mini booth 
at uh, Fleece and Harmony, and I'm so glad that you suggested that we bring the the crates to to show off our yarn because yeah. the look it looks great in the interview. Yeah, so. it was so it all worked out. And also, who else was there? Well, just before we get to that, I do want to say that I picked up so many tips from Andrea in terms of interviewing and setting things oh, up. Of course, and she is so professional. She's she's excellent. We <laughs> talked about this because we we're like. Oh, I'm like, we're just different. We just have a different style to our, our podcast. It's just a different style. But honestly, yeah, preparation, which we do some preparation. Yeah. But we like to, you know, I'm not going to say wing it. You know what we're going to talk about. Throw it throw it out there, and then we just have a conversation. But but they are very professional, yeah. meticulous, and they they a lot, a lot of work goes into it. You can see it just by watching the episode. Or you may not realize, because they make it look so easy and wonderful, but there is a lot, a lot of work, which I emphasize, because they put in their time, their work. They're, they're very well-versed in everything. They do their research ahead of time. They have yeah. their questions planned. They know everything there is to know about it. Even stuff that I forgot about myself they would bring up. Well, so they're very well prepared, and and then it showed, and there we, and then there we went and had the interview. We met them, which was wonderful. And Madeline was amazing. She's taller than the two of us, and, and she's, she's so she's beautiful, and she's sweet, and just so statuesque. And she's, and she's, she's just such a nice person. But you know what? Super smart. And yes, that she's is well. doing an amazing, amazing job. Just when they walked in the door, my first thought, like. We've been watching them, and yes. you know, it's kind of one of those things because they're a gazillion miles away. And like we talk about this because during the Germany, the past while, how there are people out there we don't see them up close and personal. And l lately, a couple of festivals we were able to meet, but you don't think someone we just see over here and, like you say, Germany. They're on the other. It's, they're on the other side of the ocean, and then they walk through those doors, and it's just like it's like you know them, even though you don't. But it was so special and wonderful to and, see them and, and to meet them and Madeline did her research like she when, when we started I, I had been on a few calls um with Andrea just to to go over what we were going to talk about and all that stuff yes. and but not Madeline and so Madeline starts with the microphone and starts talking about our background and tell me more about myself this sounds fascinating I, fascinating. I, I know <laughs> I was shocked. I was. Really I was. Good. I was, uh, it was. So good. Yeah, I almost lost my train of thought because it was. Yeah, I was. It was yeah. really surprised. So, they, super nice. Yeah. And then yes, uh, the saltwater knitting ladies were there. Yes. So they were invited as well and holding court. I would say. <laughs> well, they were there as well and. We Shirley is so happy to see. But well, you remember what was really funny though? Oh my gosh, this one is so rude, <laughs> so mean because. Okay, so we we're doing oh this God. last minute. We throw we are throwing everything together. We got some crates. We're like, okay, let's. And then people were already w waiting to come in. And they were there at nine thirty. We had to drive a distance to get there and an and, and hook up the trailer. And oh no, the trailer was no. We left the trailer. I don't even remember now. I just know that we got there with the trailer. With the trailer. No, with the trailer, and we were pulling everything out and. Oh my gosh, we had to pull yarn. We had to out reorganize. The the we had yarn. to reorganize the trailer yeah. because. All of the wool was at the front of the trailer and the shelving and everything at this part. So the day before, I don't even remember now, it's all a blur to me, but we had to haul everything out, yeah. pull out a we bunch did it of the yarn morning at 6 o'clock in the morning. Is that what we did? Yes. Yeah, we did it at our last place. That's right. We Everything was strewn across the floor, pulled everything out of the trailer, went through all of the bins and pulled, because we only needed samplers of a, a bit of everything to have yeah. enough yarn, and then repacked the trailer a different way because we needed those bins at the front, a few shelves we were going to use. So we're throwing this pop-up, it's literally a pop-up, instant <laughs> pop-up, and, and then people and then people were coming in and Kim was so gracious. She's just like, oh, come on this way. We'll give you a little chore of the mill <laughs> over here. And kind of shuffling Kim everybody right through the shop to the other yeah, end so that we could set up. And then we're doing the interview, and then people are coming and going, and now people are coming in and looking at the yarn, and I'm talking to this woman who, you know, she's come in, she's got her coat on, and she's looking at the wool, and she's kind of in profile. I'm like, oh, you like that? And then I don't even know what we're talking about. I'm talking about the wool, obviously, and blah, blah, blah. And then I said, and then all of a sudden, to the corner of my eye, um, the books arrived. There's a truck that pulls up, and it was the salt, it was like a delivery truck. Salt water socks. And I said, oh my gosh, the salt, and, and but I got confused and said, oh my gosh, the salt water, the salt water ladies have arrived because everybody was there and they're all about, you know, this arrival of, and they're all, I hear salt water this, salt water that. And I said, oh, they're, I said, oh, so they've arrived. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> Jamie saying this while Christine. Now, what did you say? I said. I said, well, I said, well one of them lady. is right in front of you. I said, talking to one of them. Yeah, that's what he said. Because I said, oh, the salt water ladies are here. Well, you're talking to one now. <laughs> I was so. My mind just went. Really? Um, thanks for telling. <laughs> thanks for letting her know that I'm talking to her and they're. I'm thinking they're riding, and here she is right here because I was just so discombobulated. <laughs> Christine and, did have her hat still on and her yeah, coat. Yeah, she had her coat, and there were dozens and dozens of people passing through and looking at the yard, and I was like, oh hey, and not clicking as to who <laughs> I was speaking with, and then I'm distracted by the delivery. So it was very funny, but talk about it embarrassed. I don't know if. If she caught on or didn't catch on, but Christine. I'm like, oh, it's Christine. Right. Thanks for that. Mm. <laughs> anyway, it was hysterical. And uh, what had happened was they had not seen their book yet. Yes. And the arrival of the truck. And, you know, through even though a hurricane was on its way, here were the books. And they were so excited because they hadn't seen the finished product. And they were doing book signings back in the uh, So then mill. they had... So yeah, so then they had the book signing of people got to meet Andrew and Madeline. They were there for the duration. They were yeah. hanging about and people were just in love when they saw them walking through. They're like, oh my gosh, they are so, so happy. Everybody was so happy. It was, you know, we don't know what the actual festival would have been like because it didn't happen. But this was like a mini festival in itself, thanks to Fleece and Harmony and Kim, and everything last minute, and people were there, and people were excited, people were happy, uh, hugs all around, and it was just a wonderful, wonderful, you know, experience that couldn't have been planned any better, which it wasn't planned, it just happened. And so this happening turned into a very, very special day indeed. Well, and the reason why it had to be open earlier, why people were there early, is because they needed, they wanted to get off the island as well. And so, <laughs> well, so we yeah. had a couple of people stop in and said, we only have 10 minutes. We're driving um, out of... Yeah, can we get a picture or can I buy some yarn? And so, um, so it, Wool yeah. and um, Wanderlust, not Wanderlust, Wanderlust, Wool and Wanderlust, um, Lisa uh, Westlake popped in and she gave us some yarn, which is super nice. This is really, really uh, beautiful yarn. Very and it's very special. soft um, sock yarn and it's gorgeous. And the colors are... And it's super, super soft. In Nova Scotia blueberries. Because Nova Scotia, is, for those who don't know, are very well known for their blueberries. A yes. lot of products across Canada, their blueberries are shipped all over the place because they have massive amounts of blueberries and they're known for their blueberries. Yeah. And yours and is? Blueberry buckle. Blueberry buckle. Have you ever had blueberry buckle? What's blueberry buckle? It's a dessert. It's really good. Oh, it like that's, a, a, that's something you can bake one. Oh, okay. Episode. Blueberry buckle. Yeah. Blueberry buckle. We'll keep that in mind and that's going to be maybe one of the next things I can bake. I keep taking yarn out of your hand. I know. I know. Sorry about that. It's so <laughs> selfish that way. Mine. Mm. <laughs> that's how you do it. I'm so, just like, well, I don't so like, it's iron, beautiful. Iron. No, this yarn is absolutely beautiful. It is really nice. It's super soft. What did you yeah. say it was again? It's uh, it's 85% merino, 15% nylon. Oh, it's very, very soft. Super, super soft. Yeah. And beautiful colors. And that was gifted. Yes. Yeah. Very super, special. super nice. So, so thank you so much for that. Yeah. Um, wool and Wanderlust. Very and we will put uh, all of the information for all of these uh, places on our show notes. Yes. We also received something else. We did. Yeah. Wonderful lady. One of the first ones who, I think she's one of the first ones who came, yes. came in. Her and her husband. Her yes. Her husband. Yeah. Um, and she just, she was... It was a ball of fire. She was so happy, happy, happy and perky and full of life. And she just wanted to come and say, and she, she came and said hello. And she just were chatty, chatty, chatting with her for a very long time. It was very sweet and very special. And then she said, I have this for you. I think she's psychic. And then she said, I have this for you. And I brought two of them. Because <laughs> she knew if she only had one, the two of us would fight over it. <laughs> Don't want any drama. So we each have one of these. How do you say the word? Self. Yes, salve. So it's a, a potion and a lotion. But do you remember, though, that a couple of days before I had pulled my calf muscle? Yes. Like, and, and a week before yes. that, I pulled it again. So it was, it was, I was not in good shape. So this was perfect for it, and it actually worked. Exactly. And, and it smells great. And for me, which we said, because she, right away, my first thought was, oh, wait a minute. 
packing and unpacking the trailer and leading up to the festival it's the reskaining of the yarn and the this and that and you're reskaining and you're doing this without punching you in the face and you're doing this and this and this and this and this it's my shoulders oh my gosh my shoulders and my neck especially in my neck i was like i need to book a massage I need to book a massage which i couldn't because there's a fiona she's <laughs> gotten away <laughs> fiona and interrupted your massage exactly so we had this to use on our body parts. And then she brought something we else. We have to say so, thank you. And then she also knows, she knows how I pick up this everywhere I go. Honey. Oh, honey. <laughs> honey brought honey. And that's Your honey brought honey to you. Because I love all honeys, especially, you know, small batch. It's like a yarn, you know, small batch. Yarns, small batch honey is very special and unique and each and every one have their unique, very special yes. taste. You can tell because I'm almost like a honey connoisseur by now because I've been using honey in my tea and I, I'd like to just taste it as well um, for, oh gosh, like 30 years, 20, oh, well over 25 years. And so I buy local regional honeys and everywhere we go, there's honeys for everyone. And I like my honeys. And I can't wait to try it. This is a wildflower honey from Quebec, which Fantastic. she brought along with her, which is absolutely wonderful. And We're I looking forward to it. I haven't tried it yet. I haven't tried it yet. I don't want to open it because I have already have, I think, three on the go. You do. So I'm not opening this. I'm going to wait and save it. So one thank from Ecuador. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. The one from Ecuador, oh. all the way from Ecuador, which I haven't even tried yet. Oh. Um, I don't want to spoil it because it's, like I said, until I finish the others. So I want to go back to the pop-up because in the pop-up, we mentioned that Fleece and Harmony had arranged it for us, which was super, super nice. Yes. And the Fruity Knitting gang were there, uh, Madeline and Andrea. And the Saltwater Knitting authors were there. And Shirley and Christine. Hot off the press, the book came in, which is fantastic. And so... And I went outside when the truck arrived, because I, well, I, I think <laughs> I caught a moment or two with them, because they were so excited. And they, they dropped them off into the side of the... Um, like the side shed garage part of the delivery area and they were jumping up and down and so excited and there were photos and happiness that they actually got to see their book. And the UPS guy said that he'd never seen so many oh, excited, right. excited people around <laughs> he was dropping that's off. Right. He said, I've never had this kind of a welcome ever because here's the UPS guy. There are dozens of people and there's people coming out of the shop and then Kim herself and the authors, Shirley and Christine. And I was out there, all kinds of people just like, oh my, like it, it was just like, yeah. So we were in the back room. Like a family reunion. They were so excited and everybody was up and down and up. Oh my gosh, it was very, very funny. And then the books, everybody was excited to see the books because they hadn't even said, the authors had not no, even seen not the book. Seen it. So they were in the back signing books for Fleece and Harmony because Fleece and Harmony are selling the books. And I bought one of them. And so I asked for an autograph. And well, so, we were back there and I was I was doing a, a little bit of a little videos because these, you know, oh I think Shirley was already sitting down and then Christine was over Christine there. was putting lipstick and, on. Oh, yes. And I, oh, thought, that's right, I thought she was putting the lipstick on to kiss the book. That's what I thought was good. <laughs> That's what she does. I need to put my... Oh, my gosh, because there was going to be photos of you. I was doing a little video. And, and, and also, I mean, and um, Madeline was also still doing some... You know, everybody was doing little pictures and filming. Yeah. And because it was so unique. We're in the, the mill side part of it now. They had the table set up. They had... They are also wonderful. They had, oh, my gosh, the best baked goods, remember? They brought yes. baked goods and they had yeah. coffee. And it was very, very special. And it just last minute, wonderful, wonderful. And it was very special. I eat a lot of those freshly baked goods. So I got my book signed. Yes. And the reason I love these books, I have all of their books. The reason I love these books is because I feel like I'm get, I'm, I have a piece of Newfoundland in, in my hand when I'm yeah. when I'm reading them. It's very they look um, it's very Newfoundland centric, and so you learn and a lot in exactly. these books. And everything in there, they they have a story and a story and another story. Everything in this book, there are stories in the book, but they add to the stories. They they've got a story for every moment yeah. everything and so they're just so super wonderful um to just listen to them on and on as you're signing the book i mean getting through it probably you're probably sitting there for 10 minutes before you're getting even through the signatures it was hysterical well and you can remember i mean you can hear their voice when you're reading these <laughs> stories oh i can hear them now and they're laugh <laughs> mostly the laughter the yes laughter, the laughter the laughter yeah yeah so i picked for my first project the great big socks 
And the reason it's Great Big Socks is because there's a lot of great big things in Newfoundland. Newfoundland is a great big island. It's over 400,000 400, square feet. And uh, they've got big boulders on it. And okay. one of the most popular bands in Canada was from Newfoundland. It's from great. Newfoundland. Great Big Sea. Oh, Great Big C. And then you knit the Great Big Socks. I did. So this is my whip. And it's for people with Great Big Feet. No, it's, it comes in multiple sizes. Well, they're the largest socks. It says right there for Great Big Feet. Yes, it does. So I don't think these will fit you. They fit my, my, they fit my foot, but I'm not sure they'll fit in your foot. Great Big Socks for Great Big Feet. But I think what you liked about what I like about them is they're... They're very, they look very traditional and very rustic with the gray and the colors that you chose, which this really pops. Here they have blue on blue, but they look, they look vintage to me. Yeah. They, they look yeah. like you could have bought these in 1950 Vintage. or 1940. That's what it looks like to me. And the other thing you mentioned to me, Jamie, even you could do it because <laughs> what I love about the book is you just follow the patterns and they're very simple. They're so well done that everything seems very simple. And I didn't say it in that voice. And I did say yeah, I did. I basically said this would be. There's also a sock in here, the basic sock, as well. But um, I know you're not basic at all. I know. It's just because he's right. Because I get stressed out about thinking about doing something that I haven't done before. But not necessarily just when it comes to knitting, because it just looks very intricate. Like even just this. Well, yeah, but just the, even these little tiny little lines. Yeah, it but, just seems very. But that's I the ribbing. Never, that's I just ribbing. It it's three knits and a pearl. That's all it is. I know. Everybody says and that. And it looks great. And then they it looks fantastic. Like, oh, I don't know. It's just like this. It's just, oh, you know what? It's just color. It's just a little knit and a pearl. <laughs> We're taking that out. That's not salt waters. But they're just <laughs> as gorgeous. But for someone who's done them, it does. I know that now because I knit, I knit a sweater once. So I know that, that from start to finish, just follow each stitch and each, you know, part of the pattern and eventually you end up with a beautiful result. So I know to take it one stitch at a time and one step at a time, but I haven't done a sock before. I haven't done a mitt. So, um, but you said, if you follow these patterns, that's yeah. what you love. They are very easy to follow and you're going to get a great result. And I use Briggs and Little. And, and the, the other reason I was yes. mentioning this to you is because it's basically a worsted weight yarn, right? And so it will knit up very quickly. And you so you know how I love my thick yarns for one reason alone. And so, well, it will quicker knit. results. Yeah, you'll see I the results. I feel like it's going to move along. Yeah, so I think that's why this. Is yeah, a good and I'm going to do. I'm going to do a pair. Okay, but I'm going to need to find some wool. <laughs> Where are you going to find wool? We don't have, have any no wool idea. here. But I, yeah, I love the, I love the pattern. It's it's great and very easy to follow, and also I just love the. I think it looks great with the um, the ribbon. It, it looks yes. And for my big calves, they definitely they definitely fit. Uh, that was the other thing I was worried about. Can I get these over my calves? And I did not have a problem at all. So excellent. Well, I wanted to see what the story was because there's always a story. I told you the story. Oh, that is the story. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's I, been done. I'm so glad you were listening to me. <laughs> Lucky listens to my history lessons. <laughs> Okay, who is the who is the king? What was Prince Edward Island? Who was the king? King George, the and it third. was his third son. It was his fourth son. <laughs> See, I told you, it was his fourth son. It was yeah, Edward Augustus. Sure. Yes. <laughs> okay. So after this, it's not a test. So we wrapped up and we left um, and thanked Kim and Ken. Place in harmony. Yeah, and it started. It started. It was a little overcast. It, it started, started to pick up. It started raining oh, a little bit. And we did leave our. We did leave our trailer there because we were we couldn't get it into the <laughs> we couldn't get into the hotel. Yeah, we didn't it. know where we were going to put the here's, trailer. But here's the part I love. So when we were checking into the hotel, the they gave us a great a, a great deal. Imagine why. And so they said, "Oh, we're, I'm going to waive your parking, so you can yeah, park for free." The parking fees. And I said, "Oh, that, thank you so much. That's so nice of you." And she said, "Well, yeah, but you can't you can't park there on Friday night because cars will flood." Because the, it's underground. <laughs> and they said it's flooded in the past and it will flood. The lower levels will flood. Yeah. So I advise you not to park down there. So we went uphill and parked on the third floor of an underground parking. 
and above our, ground parking. Oh, did I say underground? underground yeah, above, above. Sorry, above three a concrete. Yeah, three a concrete above structure. Ground. So we parked up there, and uh, of course the trailer we left at Police and Harmony. Yes. Do you know what I remember most? Because afterwards, what I remember is because it started it started raining, and you know the red earth is everywhere, and it gets yes. on your feet, and going in and out of the shop, there are rugs there to just so you don't drag that in. But yeah. the trailer had a beautiful a beautiful rust colored bottom to the trailer with <laughs> the, the red earth that was yeah yeah I'm not surprised yeah so the we got checked in just before and we had. Because it was the storm was going to hit at night, and so it well, started like raining hours, a little bit, like late, late wee yeah. hours of the early morning. So we got to checked in, and there was going to be a knit night Friday night. What did we do for dinner? We, to, we went out for remember. dinner. We went out for dinner to one of the restaurants that was just a few blocks up. We brought our umbrellas with us, I and don't remember. it was on the corner. The restaurant on the corner that was the second time we were there. Oh yes, and so then we okay, came I back. Remember. Came back, and knit night had already started. And it was Christine and Shirley, and we had Joyce and Denise and Catherine with K and Madeline and Andrea. Yes. And ourselves. And were there, was that, are we forgetting anyone? Oh, yes. Yeah. And then there was, Ontario was well represented uh, yeah. on the uh, um, PEI. So they, they were. And there were a number of other knitters that showed up as well afterwards. Yes. Yeah. Eventually a couple of others um, who just, yeah. But we had so much fun that night. The laughter. I mean, we were laughing. It was. It was so. It so was fun. so incredible. It was just. We yeah. We had some great conversation. A lot of fun. Um, well, we also you know we didn't know what anticipation of a upcoming storm. We had all had a very wonderful, wonderful afternoon. A wonderful day. It was very you know like I said it was go 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 to get everything up and running and I'm sure. Um, you know, Madeline and Andrew as well. I mean, they're planning one thing and all of a sudden we're doing this. And so it was a scramble for everybody. So yeah. even though there might have been some underlying stress, well, I know I, I, I feel that because that's how I get, um, even though it never shows. Um, I'm not frantic. I'm not I've, frantic. Never, I've never I'm not noticed frantic it before. Either. You don't want to see the behind the scenes. I've never but noticed Everybody, you know, people with hair. So whatever. So you know, we had a, I mean, I had a little wine. People had a little wine. I had a cocktail. I think I don't remember if I had a beer or a scotch. I had a but, gin, um, gin and soda. Yeah, and I think I had a scotch probably. And so I would have a little cocktail. We're just a little more chill. So a lot of laughter. And um, Ma Madeline was. They were tr we were trying to ma marry off Madeline. Oh my gosh! And everybody was trying to marry off Madeline. <laughs> that was the conversation. Christine a few started times. it. She said, "She said if you land in." Newfoundland, you'll be uh, have an engagement. You'll be engaged in twenty minutes or something like that. <laughs> exactly. And, so, and then people were mentioning who mentioned their son. They had a, their son that was there's somebody who said they had a well, son. Well, I did too. But a couple oh of us gosh. started volunteering our sons, um, who were Madeline's age, she or around Madeline's age. Madeline, she had to just smile. <laughs> then we started discussing that beautiful smile of hers, which reminds <laughs> me of so much of her father, which I mentioned, Andrew. And she had that beautiful smile. She's smiling, his father. She's just so. She's just <laughs> taking it all in. And I think she probably blushed a few times, but it was it was wonderful. And Andrew was still doing a little, you know, she was still doing a little footage and stuff. Yes, because it was such a, a wonderful evening. And uh, you're going to watch her her podcast for sure, and you'll see you'll see a lot of the antics and the the amazing fun we all had and it was very so we probably would you know had the festival just gone on as is we probably may have had it at night but yeah it was not planned so that was yeah. wonderful we were just there we had each other we had one section of the little restaurant in the lobby we had that little area to ourselves and it just was an impromptu wonderful night but yeah. I just recall as well, though, as the you know nights, it's now nighttime and it's getting on, it's getting on, and the storm's probably starting. We didn't, we had no windows where we were, so we we, I know Andrea and Madeline, they needed to get back because they were staying just down the road, yeah. so they needed to get to their their boutique hotel, and and then the night wound down, and yep, everyone went to bed, and then the storm hit, and then the power went out, and the wind, the water started coming in our windows. <laughs> And, and it started was, getting it was crazy. We, started, we were watching. Yeah. We we're up for a while because you know we're we we're anticipating. We couldn't. Were you afraid at all? Yet. Ever? You were. I was. I wasn't. I was. I was, was excited. Gonna, I no. was. I wasn't. No, because I didn't know. Because I all I, they told us that it was going to be a big storm. Like I didn't 
Well, yeah, but we don't know. We've never no. been through a hurricane. We don't know what a hurricane. We didn't realize how destructive it was. We didn't especially realize. in Charleston. We didn't know what was going on around. And I was awake. I happened to be awake. I probably got up to go to the wash myself in the middle of the night because I was up when the power went out. I was actually up. I was looking. I was at the window. You know, the rain's just pounding against the window, and you could see the trees. And there was a, there was one of the ferries docked over there, but just down below there was a marina. So you could see the boats going yeah. back and forth. And all of a sudden, I just saw this. I heard a boom. Or it was hard to tell because it was very loud, but I just saw this blue flash. There was a blue flash that came from this way. This blue flash, like a bolt of lightning almost, or yeah. something lit up. And all of a sudden, it just was like, and then all of a sudden, you just across the way, across the harbor, you just, well, our lights went out, but those lights went out first. I just saw these lights go out, boom, boom, and then boom, boom, across the way. I think across the way first. I was like, dark, dark. And then whoo, I was like, here we go. And complete darkness. Everything was dark. The entire hotel was dark. Uh, even some of the stairwells were dark. I don't even remember. I probably was a little freaked out. Did and I, then did I, I think you, you everything was dark. Yeah. yeah. And then you the next out. morning, um, everything was dark. Like you couldn't see anywhere. And then they had, did have those little tiny flashlights they had flash attached light. to these we, we stairs. Were, yeah. We, and they said they had put flashlights in every room, but we didn't, we didn't have, have one. Anticipating. They did say, they did say, there's the likelihood is there will we will lose power we'll lose power to yeah. the island if anything which is fine when you're in the hotel because you have a generator <laughs> however the generator didn't work so the they said they tested it four work. times beforehand and it just it, it conked out no. immediately and no. so we didn't really have full power until monday morning at twelve thirty in the morning so we were four days in mostly darkness they did have the areas lit up down below so when we got up, we didn't even know which way to go, which is a good thing it wasn't an emergency. When we came out of our room and we were probably... Pitch black. Oh, we had our own flashlights because we had brought a flashlight yes. where we were going to be. Yeah. We didn't, you know, when we were going to be at these sort of secluded areas, we had a flashlight. Um, but we went down one stairwell and we're like, no, this doesn't look right. And then we went to look for another stairwell. And yes, it was lit up with little flashlights leading down the stairs. Yep. Um, and then the lobby, I don't know how they had it lit up. I can't remember. Um, they had just a few, couple of little lights and candles at tables. Yes, there were candles. And they had breakfast for us. Yeah. So overall, what they did. I, overall, they did a fan, fantastic job. I mean, it was a very difficult situation to be in. Yes. They had their staff stay over at night because they knew that uh, they, they may not be coming to work the next day. Well, they couldn't go to. Yeah, they couldn't leave the hotel. Well, everybody had to be off the road at ten o'clock on Friday night. Yes, there was a there was that was mentioned the that curfew. there couldn't be anyone out outdoors after ten p.m. and also not to leave the hotel at all. And uh, yes. that went on for the next. Till yeah, Saturday we weren't we weren't supposed to be. People did go out to see what was going on. No, we only poked our head out the window or out the door. Yeah, and but oh, we was, weren't supposed to be going anywhere on Saturday. Low. It was frightening. And then Sunday, people went out, and yeah. we went out um, and inspected the the damage. It was horrendous see, in some areas. We seen some of it there, but we had we did have food, so we're thankful we had shelter. We had food. It was, you know, cold food for the first few days, just, you know, cold cuts and sandwiches and cold salad and cold, like, boiled eggs. And, yeah. But we had food, and we were happy, desserts. Um, it was great. We had drinks and cocktails and, you know, yeah. uh, water. We, well, some people were without water. If you're in the country and your well's not pumping, like, you had to store water. They suggested some food, water. Um, well, when you think about it, though, like, when this happens and you have no electricity, the gas station doesn't work. The so much restaurants are closed, about. the stores are closed, and so we should have filled our tank up before the night before, and we didn't. We didn't think about And so we that. didn't have enough gas to get off the island. And so we, and the lineups were three to six hours. Yes. And so we thought maybe we'd go out at midnight, and because the lineups won't be as long, you couldn't see anything. It was pitch we dark. We did go out that night because oh, it was, we thought, it was terrifying. somebody suggested where we could find gas. Is that what it was? Why yes. we went out? and we were all over the and place. And then we couldn't, it, you think you could follow it, but our phone, we were worried we got our, our, we had that battery pack, but we had no, oh my God. we had no GPS. So we, it was getting worrisome because they were like, this is, so we went to the one or two gas stations that they mentioned, or they said, oh no, that they're out of gas there because there were one or two gas stations that had a generator that had gas i just remember driving it seemed very far out and we're like we need to get back to the hotel like now yeah and we drove back to the hotel discouraged 
Um, and so we had even less gas. <laughs> yeah, we had even less gas. And then I think by the next day, like the Sunday afternoon, they were able to heat up a soup somehow. Yeah. And the jet generator popped off and on a couple of times for briefly and then out again. But we had a warm soup on day three, I think it was. Yeah. And then on the final day, the generators were up and running. That would and, be Monday. Yeah. And we did have, so we had one hot lunch and one hot dinner. Yeah. And then... Yeah, so we would need to get gas for the vehicle. I, I, I don't do lines very well. Um, I'm not the most patient person in the world. So I said to Jamie, I'm willing to drive out to the bridge and even cross the, cross bridge, the bridge and go into New Brunswick to, to get gas we and come back. That, yes, because there was that lovely young couple who had just arrived and they came, they had arrived coming from Moncton. Yeah, so they, were, they said there was a gas station that was functional just before getting on the bridge to PEI. Yeah. And so we thought, okay, if anything, let's go that way. But then we didn't know. We also had the trailer that was still left behind at Police and Harmony, which was another... 30 minutes. 30 minutes the opposite direction. So it's like, what do we do? Do we get the trailer and try to think that we're going to make it? All I thought in my mind is, we're going to run out of gas on that bridge on the water, <laughs> and I'm going to freak out. Jamie doesn't do bridges. I don't do bridges, <laughs> heights, and water. So I was like, no, that's, I know that's what would have happened. So we, found, like, yeah, so we found a uh, gas station on the way to the bridge. It was about 16 kilometers we were almost this to side the, of the bridge. We were almost to the bridge, and just by chance, we saw we passed the lineups at a couple. Yeah. Of, there were maybe two gas stations with lineups down the road. It was chaos. There were trees and Oh, my gosh, on the Trans-Canada Highway. And there hydro were, lines down. Yeah, it was covering half of the highway. Like, we had to drive around the, the live wires and the poles on the on the Trans-Canada Highway. And, and also was like, there was chaos because cars were in all directions trying to get to certain gas pumps and we're like, yeah. and we just by chance were like, oh my gosh, there's there are cars stopped over there and then we could see a light on and we're like, oh my gosh. So I think in hindsight, it probably had just opened. They got a generator and just opened. There were about five cars. And one in front of us. And, that was and it. we're like, what? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, is I guess. But we, we had that happen before where we stopped and we stopped twice or one time and they're like no there is no gas there's only diesel so if you have diesel and there are cars lined up and they're like no just diesel they're out of gas try over here they're out of gas so i thought oh my gosh oh my gosh and we show up and they're like there was gas and we're like oh. so we filled up and picked up our trailer and got it off the island yes and we were which what should have been a, a short drive turned into a very long drive because we were two hours i think two hours in transit to get gas and get the trailer and back then before we actually were able to now let's leave the island and and yeah. our and heading into nova scotia our our hosts at our next location to stay assured us that the power was back on there and there was power there and we we're all good to get to our destination in nova scotia yeah so it was like i think overall you know I, one of the things that had left the greatest imprint on me uh, through all of this was just the the way that people were helping each other throughout this people Absolutely. were not angry people were like, people were just there to help each other and we saw the army come in to to help that's right out. the army was um, as we're driving approaching and leaving uh, army after army truck the army was coming in yeah i think it was because the priority was to get charlottetown up and running because yes. the hospitals and the infrastructures to the major city was priority and the the gas situation was getting very chaotic people wanting to leave um and not being able to leave like it was it was going to it was going to get a little maybe worse before better so the yeah. army was on the way up there were hydro trucks we saw lines, and lines the orange army yeah. the orange army which they called themselves and they were coming from as far as ontario from all over the place to come and in the united restore, states as well restore uh you know some of it back the services to the city as we left and we did see some of that as you'll see um we did see some of that and um even on this, in the old section, we went to the old section, walked through the old section of Charlottetown and just saw the uh, neighbors out with chainsaws and helping each other with, with the... Hauling logs and wood and clearing and helping and it was very, uh, it was emotional. It was we very emotional, emotional. A few times when yeah. I realized that we These were These trees just, are 100 years old. And we were very lucky, you know, we were lucky in the area that we happened to be in and other areas, of course, if you followed the news, there was a lot of destruction everywhere. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, so I just take my hat off to all the people who helped out yeah. everywhere from the staff and the hotel to the to the neighbors Probably of people whose people. trees, like everybody. It yeah. was just, everybody just got together and it was such a positive feeling. We thanked the hotel staff. They were so good and patient and did yeah. their best. 
and they provided and they were sm with smiles and happy smiles and and the people you know even the people that were stuck at the hotel with us like we got to know several other people all kinds of people from different walks of life that we were all in the same situation yeah um and it was just almost like this this bonding yes time. Was, there's definitely bonding with, obviously with our knitting group <laughs> they became our you know our friends yeah this, they were there as well so we saw them at breakfast we saw them we were able to knit a couple of times they gave us a room remember the next day they gave us yeah the, the second room on the second level which is all windows it was bright sunshine um and so during the day we were able to knit there there was still no power at night but during the day we had another little knit get together so we really got to know um our ontario friends and the group from ottawa yeah and the girls and everybody and Christine and Shirley. They and kept us laughing all day. They kept and us you modeled for them. They 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 oh brought all their samples from the sock book and they did and, and they, they put them on they, you. Had, they put <laughs> they did their presentation with just our little group. It was yes. absolutely wonderful. Yeah. And you know we had you know and we had some great time to really connect with uh, real people and you know we we're just all one in the same boat and the yeah. Shirley and Shirley and. Christine were hysterical and wonderful and heartwarming stories and charming and hugs all around and Andrea and Chris uh, and Andrea and Madeline especially wonderful you know we could feel for them because they they came from very far they were planning on being there for a couple of weeks couple of weeks to do what they do best and that was you know just produce some of their meeting people producing some of the show and we had some very special moments with them and hugs all around to them and they're wonderful wonderful people to have met yeah absolutely we met so many friends there new and new friends and it was yes. it was wonderful i definitely go back i love it there and even moved there i love pi it was it was it's such a fantastic place they they and they love us because they said they had such an influx of ontarians prior to this who just they're coming from everywhere coming this was maybe the year that there were so so many ontario tourists everybody said the same and such an influx of ontarians moving yeah. to the to the area and we're like <laughs> we we're stopping at we're finding ourselves on real estates you know there are a couple of real estate offices you know when we finally were able to walk about and anywhere we were prior to and on that beautiful sunny sunday you know looking we find ourselves looking at real estate booklets and real estate properties going hmm. <laughs> so overall what would you say i loved it i loved it i would go back in a minute i absolutely love prince Edward island i love Everything about it. I love the people. I love the food. I love the. It's just a gorgeous place, and the arts, cult, the culture, and and the arts scene is fantastic. I absolutely love Prince Edward Island. Yeah, and I have to say absolutely the same thing. The the people who are what make Prince Edward Island Prince Edward Island. They people are known for their joie de vivre and their hospitality and their laughter and they're just such a great great place to visit and a place to be and a place to live and um, we would go back and we may very well go back yeah absolutely so what's up next where do we go after PEI Nova Scotia Nova Scotia so our next episode is going to be Nova Scotia that's and, right and so for more fun more drama not as bad as Fiona but it's a, it's a lot of fun we you're going to see uh, interviews with some great, great artisans and some great wool. We as made well. some great stops. We've had some great days, great moments, beautiful countryside as never before seen with my eyes because I hadn't been. So, you know, moving forward, we had a lot, lot of time on the road to digest. I'm still getting emotional now thinking about it. <laughs> so, that's that's this tissue too. Or to shoot anyway. Yeah, no, no, it was, yeah. it was because we went through a lot. Well, yeah, you don't and realize it because so many times you're people. just making the most of it and you're you're just moving along and you're adrenaline and, and wonderful and you don't, you can't even fathom what's happened until you've left and even leaving behind people were, they, they're dealing, they're, there's a lot to do. Yeah. For us, we were able to, you know, for us, we're fortunate, we're able to just drive away and off to you know, uh, safe havens and, and lights and electricity. We had heard that electricity was back on in Halifax, we're outside of Halifax, so we were moving forward, but we had a long time to reflect um, on the road leading up to where we were going next. Yeah, so for the next episode, it's gonna be Nova Scotia. We're gonna see Lunenburg and Annapolis Valley, and it's it's we had a fantastic time there as well. So um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. We really enjoyed making it. Um, again, we met a lot of great friends, and we just want to thank you for yeah. watching. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care and have a great week. À la prochaine, mes amis. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this one just
doesn't have a tassel. Well, that stretches nicely. Yes, it do. Almost got her there. Almost got her there. Get your storm chips because this is tradition. <clears throat> tradition on the west, on the east coast. Tradition is, you know, prepare for the storm. You get it better. Get your storm chips because you're going to be sitting about doing a whole lot of nothing. Maybe knitting by candlelight. Yeah. You better have your storm chips for snacks. We're in Charlottetown, just in the middle of Fiona. I think she, we're at the tail end of it right now, and she's done a lot of damage to the city. She's, there's a lot of trees that have been turned up and fallen on cars and looks like there's a river going down Main Street. And we're standing right at the end of the pier in front of the Delta Hotel, which is keeping us safe. But as you can see, there's still a lot of wind blowing. And there we are, 2022. And the ship and the, I don't know what the, the water breakers are blown off and out of control. Um, but the wind is still quite strong. We're just sheltered around the corner from the strong wind. 